So let's talk now about how you would actually implement the publisher subscriber in Android. And there's a, a bunch of different ways to do it, so we're just going to focus on one part. Um, so first, let's talk about what it means to implement the pattern in the first place. So there's a bunch of steps that you need to do. One of which is you have to define or determine what the publisher subscriber mapping is. How do, how do publishers and subscribers you know, interact? What's, what's the means by which they communicate? And, and of course, in the context of Android, this is done via an intent. And as you all know, at this point, it keeps track of various things. Optionally, it keeps track of the name of something. More likely, in the case of PubSub-like models, it keeps track of the data. It keeps track of the action. It keeps track of the extras, the category, et cetera. Those are things you can put into a, an intent data structure. And then that information will get distributed by some magic cloud-like thing to the various receivers. If you want to avoid this overhead of giving everybody everything all the time, then you need to come up with some kind of filtering mechanism to narrow people's interests in certain topics or certain parts of certain topics. So in Android, this is done by the concept of intent filters. And there's different ways to, to define or program, implement intent filters. You can do them dynamically by creating an intent filter and then registering it when you call register receiver. You can also use the manifest file, as we show here, to specify different things, different actions, different data, and so on. And then you will only receive that stuff that matches your filters. So it's kind of like a sieve, and only things that pass through the filter or pass through the sieve are actually delivered to the end, end result, to the broadcast receivers. Another thing you need to do is figure out how you're going to go ahead and define and implement the subscriber registration API. And there's a couple of pieces to this. First, you have to figure out how you're going to let applications, which in this case could be activities or services, go ahead and register broadcast receivers to get called back. And there's a couple different variants here. You can, you can have a register receiver model where you pass in the receiver you want called back and optionally the intent filter or not. Uh, and then you can also give permissions. And you can actually, even in, in the second case, you can actually give a handler where you want the call to take place if you don't want it to take place on the thread of control where the uh, broadcast receiver was originally created. So you have a lot of flexibility in Android about how you control where things are going to run. These subscriptions that you make, the registrations you make of the receivers, are typically stored in some kind of internal data structure somewhere. In the case of Android, there's a very complicated means for doing this called the Activity Manager Service, which I encourage you to take a look at sometime. It's, it's vast. It's like 16,000 lines of code or, or more. Um, there's a method called register receiver in there that's, that's non-trivial. There's even longer methods we'll look at in a second. Um, and basically what they do is they build some kind of hash map called M registered receivers, which is going to keep track of who's registered for which different kinds of things. So when you call register receiver, it goes ahead and checks to see if this particular uh, receiver is already registered for this stuff. And if so, it adds it to a linked list of things that are going to be registered. And then it goes ahead and sticks it into this hash map. So you can end up with multiple receivers registered for the same intent. And that is what's used to support this group communication, this <clears throat> one-to-many communication that's the hallmark of the publisher-subscriber pattern. You can have many things be dispatched just as you can have one thing be dispatched. Uh, then you also have to figure out how to define and implement the notification API. This is the thing that, that the publisher uses to notify the subscribers. And once again, there's a couple different variants. We have a way of being able to say, from an application point of view, from a publisher point of view, send out this intent to all the, notify, all the registered broadcast receivers or all the subscribers. And Android has a couple different variants of this, if you recall. One is called send broadcast, and that sends it out to everybody, kind of in parallel. And the other is called send ordered broadcast, which serializes the way in which the dispatching takes place. And there's a whole pile of variants of send ordered broadcast that do various kinds of things. So I recommend you take a look at the documentation for more details about that. Under the hood, in the Activity Manager service, there's a bunch of methods that handle this. There's a method called broadcast intent, which is kind of the entry point into the Activity Manager service. And it very quickly grabs a lock and calls broadcast intent locked. And broadcast intent locked is like 350 lines of code. It's, it's very, very 
nasty, hard to figure out code. But what it basically does is it goes ahead and it takes the, the intent that's being broadcast and it looks up to see whether or not that intent has been reg registered for in Android manifest files, those are the static receivers, and or registered via calls to register receiver, which is a dynamic call. And it builds up a set of receivers that are going to handle these requests. And then it goes on and does a lot more stuff, which I'm not going to talk about here in detail, but if you look at the code, you'll see basically what it tries to do is it tries to send out the registered receivers, in other words, the dynamic ones. If, it, if you're not doing an ordered broadcast, it tries to send them all out concurrently. So they all get sent. It just goes through a while of going send, 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 send. And those things get sent to all the ones that are, that are dynamically registered. And that's because the assumption is that those processes, those activities, those services, whatnot, are up and running or could be up and running quickly, and so they will get delivered the messages very fast, the intents very fast. All the things that are actually registered statically by manifest files, however, are delivered one at a time, because you have to start up the activity or the service, uh, you have to start up the process and then deliver the thing to the broadcast receiver. And so they don't want to start up all these processes unnecessarily. They do them one at a time because that takes more effort to do that. So it's very, very complicated code. I've, I've read it a number of times for a variety of reasons. And it's really fascinating to figure out how it all works. OK, so that's basically an overview of how you might implement the pattern. Now let's talk about how this pattern gets applied in Android. And to do this, I decided to dive down into the implementation of this pattern in the context of the battery service and the phone app, which exist in Android 4.0. So Android 4.0 is where I got the example from here. Oddly enough, Android 4.1 has changed this example slightly. And so I couldn't show you the 4.1 version because I haven't figured out all the pieces there yet. Um, I'm not sure whether they still do this anymore in Android 4.1, but they have to somehow. Anyway, what happens here is as the, follow, the following. When the phone app starts up, in, in part of its initialization before the onCreate method is called, it goes ahead and it creates a broadcast receiver called phone app broadcast receiver. So it makes an instance of this thing. And then in its onCreate method, it goes ahead and it creates a bunch of intent filters, one of which is for action battery low, which is an intent. And then it goes ahead and it registers that intent filter along with the phone app broadcast receiver. It takes all those things and it registers those with the activity manager service. So that goes inside of the register receiver callback that we looked at before. And that stashes all that stuff inside that, that hash map we were looking at. At some point down the road, dot, 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 the battery service, which is a system service, is running. And when the battery service starts up, its constructor actually does something really interesting. This is a kind of cool example of, of patterns connected to patterns, right? a compound pattern example here. So what it basically does is it creates something that's a, um, called a U event observer, or user event observer. And it creates this thing called an M power supply observer. And it goes ahead and it registers this observer with some low level mechanism. This is, this is the, b the battery monitoring hardware or device driver, something that's lurking inside the Android device framework. And then it, it goes ahead and just you know, waits for something to happen. So this is an example of using the observer pattern at the low level to wait for a notification that battery that voltage is low. When um, when the low level driver discovers that battery is low, it calls back on the on U event callback method using the observer pattern. And that thing turns around and calls the update method on the battery service. And the update method calls the process values method. And the process values method creates an intent, which is the action battery low intent. And it broadcasts that to anybody who happens to care about this. And there's various things that care about this. In this particular case, uh, for the Android 4.0, this ends up being sent to the activity manager service. The activity manager service says, aha, who cares about this? Oh, I know who cares about this. The phone app cares about this. And, and some other stuff may care as well. But the phone app cares about this. So it turns around and calls a method internally called perform receive, which does a whole pile of things, and eventually goes ahead and dispatches the on receive hook method on the phone app. And then that goes ahead and does something that informs the phone application that the battery is getting low. 
and there's, it's a bunch of callbacks and very convoluted and so on. But that's basically the path to the portion of Android that's handling that kind of stuff. Any questions about, about that? So that's an example of the illustration of the publisher subscriber pattern in the context of Android. And oh, lo and behold, it also uses the observer pattern at a lower level in order to be able to wait to be notified when the battery voltage lowness is detected. That notifies the battery service. The battery service turns around and does a broadcast to send the event out. So we're using these patterns, kind of combining them together, chaining patterns together in order to have this callback driven, asynchronous, anonymous, decoupled in time and space way of being able to inform interested parties that something has occurred. And if there's nobody who cares, you know, if you've just decided, I don't care if my battery's running low, doesn't bother me, I'll just, my phone will just shut itself down automatically, then there don't need to be a subscriber here. It'll just evaporate in thin air. So there, nothing will happen at all. Okay, so Android implements publisher subscriber via Intense and the Intense framework. And it does this to give you this nice late binding effect where you can make changes after the system is running. For example, what I just showed you here takes place after the system is launched. So um, we're not doing what I just described to you there. We're not doing this registration in the manifest files. Instead, we're doing it in the app. So with the phone app, when the phone app starts up, it goes ahead and it creates an intent filter that says, I want to hear about the activity for the action battery. I want to hear about the intent for the action battery low. It registers that dynamically. The battery service doesn't know about the phone app. It doesn't know about the status service. It doesn't know about anything. It just knows when it learns the battery is low, it's going to tell anybody who cares something's happened. So it's very dynamic. You can come along and make changes. Um, the intent data in this case is, is sort of a passive descriptor. It's a data structure that keeps track of what has changed and is being announced in the system. So something's happened, battery's low. We tell everybody about that. That's one use of intents. There are other uses of intents as well, where you say, I want you to start this activity, right? So start service. That's an example of using intent to start something to be run. The broadcast example is when something's happened and you want to inform or notify others of the occurrence of something else. Uh, and you can, in Android, you can basically pass these intent objects various ways using start broadcast and start, or sorry, send broadcast, send ordered broadcast, send sicky broadcast. There's a bunch of different ways you can do to pass this information around. Okay. Any questions about the publisher subscriber pattern? Any questions about the broker pattern? Again, just to kind of underscore the point, <coughs> as you take a look at this stuff under the hood, um, you'll often find out that, that many patterns are used together in order to implement this kind of stuff. So uh, for example, you'll find brokers used in both publisher, subscriber, and, and uh, broker. That's pretty common in both of those things. So you can go across address spaces. In some systems, people layer publisher, subscriber on top of broker. That's, that's one model. That's the way that Corba did it. <coughs> The downside, the nice part there is you get reuse. The downside is you get extra layers of overhead. Other systems that implement publisher-subscriber do so without making a broker. They just have publisher-subscriber kind of as the, the native mechanism. And there's all kinds of ways you can then layer brokers on top of publisher-subscribers. So you, you can basically take these patterns and you can take implementations of these patterns and rearrange them in all kinds of interesting ways. In real life, um, these days, more and more people tend to move towards some kind of publisher subscriber like model because you can do an awful lot of things with it. But you have to be careful that you don't end up falling into the trap of consistency at the expense of clarity. So not everything in life requires or benefits from a, an anonymous group communication mechanism, although many things do. So here are some examples, right? So <clears throat> imagine that you want to uh, tell all your friends you just got into, uh, I don't know, Stanford for grad school, right? So how would you tell them that? You would go ahead and post it on your, your Facebook page or something like that, or you'd tweet it, right? Um, and that would be a good example of, of mass, broad communication, publish a subscriber, you publish, lots of people find out, that's great. If you want to, I don't know, invite your parents over or invite yourself over to your parents for dinner this weekend, 
Are you going to publish that on Facebook? Probably not, right? You're going to pick up the phone. And you're going to say, hey, I'm coming home this weekend. Can I, can I uh, bring my laundry or whatever else you want to do? And so that's a good example of a point-to-point -point communication. Probably using a published subscriber mechanism to inf or you know, tweeting to the world you're going home to see your parents this weekend, <laughs> unless you're Oedipus or something like that, just isn't very notable. You know? um, so the point is that different things are usable in different contexts. By the way, did anybody get that? Yeah. Okay, good. Although, this is the value of a liberal arts education. I just want to point it out to you, right? <laughs> Everybody who's, who's only like in pure engineering, like Oedipus, what, what the heck is that? And, and why do we care if he's going to see his parents? Um, so, so, uh, so anyway, the point is that you want to pick and choose the mechanisms to use, and patterns give you a language to describe that. And of course, reusable software, like we find in Android and other middleware, give us a vehicle for being able to implement it and reuse it more readily. Okay, so that's it for this session. Any other questions?